And I want to say welcome, everybody. This is Kathleen Gage with Plant-Based Eating for Health. And today I'm really excited to have an international expert who is uh, resides from Germany, I believe. Yes. Okay. Germany. And uh, which is really exciting because with technology today, we can reach out all over the globe and connect with people who are like-minded, people who believe in an ethical way of living, an ethical way of eating, and ethics for the animals. And my guest today is Claudia Gunswind, and she resides from Germany. She is a raw food chef who became vegan in the year 2000. So it's been a while. It's been about 20 years, yeah. actually 21 years. And she started her vegan journey when her two sisters became vegan and educated her about veganism. And I'm going to go ahead and let Claudia share with you how she got involved in veganism because of her sisters being a raw food chef. Uh, she's lived in several different areas of the world, and she's really made it her mission to educate people about not only healthy eating, but ethical eating for the animals, because now you're very involved in the whole side of being ethical to animals. So Claudia, yeah. great to have you here. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about what life was like before you became a vegan. And now that you're a vegan, what, mm -hmm. what has changed for you? Well, when I was a child, I've never liked to eat meat or eat animal products. But my father always told me I have to eat meat and eat eggs and drink milk to grow. So to become uh, bigger, faster like this. But every time I saw meat on my plate, I was thinking, I don't want to eat it. It was an animal. So, but then later, yeah, I, I got used to it. Mm -hmm. So I continued eating meat and eating uh, animal products. But then I always thought, oh, no, I don't want to eat it. And then one day, yeah, I became first vegetarian. And when my sisters went to this uh, vegetarian festival, they got to know this vegan cook who showed them how the animals were treated, like um, how to get the, the eggs and mm -hmm. the milk, yeah, the dairy products. And when they came back home, they told me, yeah, we became vegan because we, made, we met this great um, cook, chef, the vegan chef. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, I also would like to become vegan because I've never liked to eat meat and the animal products. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And from well, this you know, one of the things that I find interesting with people that I've had on my show is they come from two camps. One is they yeah. were avid meat eaters when they became vegan. I was one of those. I was a big carnivore. It, it was mm -hmm. my mother was from Belgium. And so we would have these big Sunday roasts and, um, you know, the, the rarer the meat, the better. And I think about it now and it's like, oh my gosh, I was so unconscious about my eating. And then there's the other camp, uh, which really you fall in that of mm -hmm. you really never felt good about eating meat. And so yeah. you were more connected um, empathically to the feelings that the animals mm -hmm. went through. Um, when you were a vegetarian, how did you differentiate between being a vegetarian and being a vegan? What foods did you eat as a vegetarian that now you will no longer eat? Yeah, I seldom ate eggs. And yeah, I had dairy products like um, yogurt, milk, and like with cakes, you know, like in cakes, there's always milk or egg. And yeah, for example, chocolate. But mm -hmm. now, now you can get vegan chocolate or cheese. Yeah, I also ate cheese. So are you 100% raw food uh, vegan? Uh, no, right now not. Okay. But um, before I was like for around six months. Uh -huh. I was a raw, a raw foodist, but then, yeah, I thought I would like to eat different kind of foods. Like if you're only raw, a raw foodist, you can't, you don't have so much choice, so many choices. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Which is true because I tried raw food for a while and mm -hmm. uh, I, I just find that for me as a vegan, um, being able to have potatoes, being able to have yeah. rice, beans, all of that, um, I that works better for me. So mm -hmm. is, is being a vegan part of your business model? Is that also what you do in business? 
yeah, I, I mean, I wrote a, a raw, raw food book. Oh, okay. Raw, raw vegan dishes. Um, I was also thinking maybe in the future I could open a raw vegan cafe or a vegan cafe. Mm -hmm. would be nice. Spread more um, healthy food. And, and, yeah. and with the pandemic the way it is, um, how, mm. how is that in Germany right now with um, what, what's going on with the shutdowns, with restaurants, with the pandemic? Um, and where do you see that going? Well, I, the situation is really not good. Today mm -hmm. in the news, I saw that many people are very frustrated because of closing the, the restaurants. Right. And yeah, okay, some people opened the restaurants, but they shouldn't do that because the police came. And I think it's not a good idea that the restaurants are completely closed. Right. Before we could also do the to, uh, to go, like dishes to go. Mm -hmm. Now it's really completely closed. And, and where do you see things going in the coming year, the coming two or three years uh, with what's happening with the pandemic and how people can make healthier food choices? Well, I, I saw also in the news, or we have many commercials about vegan food. They really promote veganism in Germany. And yeah, I'm sure that more and more people will become vegan also to be healthier. Mm -hmm. More and more people in Germany also focus on healthy food. Like also, many people try vegan. Uh, yeah, for example, now we have veganary, right? Right. So I see many commercials about starting vegan to yeah to eat vegan food for this right. month or maybe longer. So well, we're right in the middle of vegan. It's veganuary, veganary. It's it's uh, a month where they're they're challenging people to go vegan for that yeah. month, and I think they had like a half a million new people that joined in, which is phenomenal. That mm -hmm. it, it's that kind of a movement now, and. If you were to advise somebody who wants to get started as a vegan and they really know nothing about it, what would be the, the steps that somebody could take uh, that would help them to have a more solid foundation? Well, first, I would um, advise to start uh, step by step. Maybe you know, first become vegetarian and then gradually um, eat less of the animal products and, yeah. You know, also meat, eat less maybe once a week, and then you can try to leave meat alone for one month, maybe you can try, and then leave all the other products, the animal products. And then oh. also maybe to have an, a cookbook, like with simple recipes. Okay. okay. And, and what's the name of your book? It's a raw vegan wellness kitchen. And raw vegan wellness kitchen. We'll make yeah. sure to put the link in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, oh, book. perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, it has many recipes, like from breakfast to snacks. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. You know, and also information about raw vegan food. Well, you know, it's so interesting because the, the thing that I hear from a lot of people as to why they're not starting, um, which these are all excuses. It's like once they start really looking at their health and their contribution to uh, climate change and the animal abuse and all of that, um, when you're made aware of that, you do make changes. But the, the thing I hear from people is, oh, I have to give up so much. But in reality, you're gaining so much by going plant-based, yeah. vegan. Um, and in your case, you started out as a raw vegan. And what were some of the foods when you were raw vegan that were a regular part of your staple? What, what did you eat on a regular basis? I liked uh, avocado. Yeah. And um, yeah, bananas, um, yeah, salad, or a lot of uh, superfoods like chlorella, spirulina, and uh, cacao. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, 
Is it more expensive for somebody from your perspective, from what you know about being a plant-based vegan, a hundred percent raw at one point, and now you do have some cooked vegan food, but is it more expensive or less expensive to be a vegan? Mm, no, I don't think so. Like you can also prepare like with uh, like lentils or chickpeas. Mm-hmm. This, mm-hmm. These products aren't um, expensive, or you can prepare batches of um, the cooked foods and then leave in the fridge and then eat them. I mean, warm up. I think not really expensive. Right, right. Well, and that's another thing that I hear from people. They say, oh, it's so expensive. And what they're talking about are the processed vegan foods, which, you know, there's mixed feelings about that. Um, And to me, it's like, if it helps to move you in the right direction, that's a good gateway food for people to to choose. Um, And I just recently discovered a company called Clara Foods, and they're actually doing, they're engineering um, egg protein that has animal protein in it and no animal is used in the production. It's all based on science. And I, I, I'm fascinated Mm -hmm. with what they're doing, but Mm -hmm. you mentioned about the amount of cruelty that goes into, uh, not being plant-based, like for example, with eggs, um, most people have no idea about egg manufacturing, even when the food manufacturers say they're free range. I just discovered, and this was in discovering Clara yeah. Foods, that free range can be where you have, I think it's something like 20,000 chickens in a hutch with one little tiny hole for them to get mm-hmm. out through. And they call that free range. And a lot of people don't realize that. They have this image of animals on, in, on a, a, a pasture and they're living mm-hmm. freely. And yeah. so tell us about what you know about... Um, without getting too graphic, but what you know about the animal cruelty that has led you to educate people around being more vegan? Mm. Yeah, for example, f- for getting the eggs, right? They they sort the, um, the male chicks and the female chicks, right? Mm. And the male chicks, they throw away or they shred them. I feel this is really cruel. Mm-hmm. Only mm-hmm. because um, for this industry, they they need the only the female females, right? Right. So they just throw away like like a thing. I, I think it's really sad. Mm-hmm. And also with the dairy, how to get the milk? It's, it's the same. They they separate the the calves from the mother. It's also really terrible. Right, right. And I want to remind people that this is Kathleen Gage with Plant-Based Eating for Health. And I'm talking with Claudia Ganswind, and she is a uh, vegan chef. She wrote a book on raw veganism called uh, Raw Vegan Diet Secrets, I believe. Is that the name of the book? Uh, Raw Vegan Wellness Kitchen. Uh, Okay, well, maybe you need to do the diet secrets one. (laughs) So show the book again, if you would. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And you can get that on Amazon. Okay? Yes. Amazon. And we'll put the link below. Um, now with um, people making the decision to to make changes, give me the first three steps that somebody could actually take in order to go vegan. Uh, what would they need to do in their kitchen? What do they need to do on their grocery list? Uh, when they go grocery shopping, what are some tips that you have? Yeah, I, like for breakfast, I would uh, suggest um, muesli or to make a porridge. Mm-hmm. Like f- filling, like for, for breakfast, it's good to eat something filling or to eat before a fruit or make a smoothie. It's also good. And yeah, for lunch, maybe to have a salad before and then to eat something with quinoa, to make a quinoa bowl with different kind of veggies tofu and or lentils or chickpeas Mm -hmm. and yeah for dinner maybe a curry something warm like a thai curry or japanese curry i like this (laughs) and and what you can do is you can use tofu in place of uh, the meats and Mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely so um and how do people get in touch with you what is your web address yeah, they can find me on Instagram as Vegan Wellbeing or on YouTube as uh, Vegan Wellbeing, Wellbeing Raw Vegan Chef. Okay. 
Uh, on, yeah, on Facebook, same Claudia Raw Vegan Chef. Okay, excellent. We'll make sure to put the links below. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the whole vegan movement going as we move forward? And, you know, it's been documented. It's very evident now that factory farming is a major contributor to viruses and pandemics. Animal-based foods are. Where do you see everything going in the future? Well, I see that the planet is going more uh, into veganism. Mm -hmm. More and more people see that the animals are not treated well. And they think also that's really cruel to eat these kind uh, to eat animals. And, you know, maybe they will open more their heart and see the suffering. Right, right. They decide to eat healthier and that they don't need meat to survive. Exactly. And, you know, it always amazes me when I'm reading posts and, and uh, threads about plant-based eating, about veganism. And then you always have that one person who comes in with, oh, I'm eating a big hamburger right now. I love the bacon on my hamburger. And I'm thinking, are you that disconnected from what's being said here that you can't even see that's not funny? Um, because yeah. the, the cruelty to animals is not funny. And I know for me, I started because of health. I had bad inflammation and I, I gave it seven days to see if it would clear it up within two mm -hmm. days, the inflammation was gone. And the more I've learned about this, the more I, I came for health and I stay for the animals. And, and I think a lot of people do. So, yeah. so um, what, what are some other thoughts you have around um, helping people to make a better choice around the food that they consume around the consciousness in the way they eat? Maybe they can also read more about veganism to know what it means. Okay. And then later they can uh, work more on their wellness, like to do exercise mm -hmm. or do more for their body. And yeah, they can think what they put in their body, if it contributes to their health or mm -hmm. not. Yeah. And what are some books that you can, besides your book, what are some other mm -hmm. books that um, either had an impact on you or you recommend to people that are saying, what do I do? A Diet for a New America. This oh, okay. Yes, this, A Diet think, for a yeah, New America. I, yeah, this right. Um, this, I think this book is good because I met this guy on, in Vancouver when I went to his uh, lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was he explained everything very well, how he became vegan and how his book helped other people to go vegan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good book. To okay. Recommend. Okay. And have you read Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman? Uh, no. That's, that one I always yeah. recommend to people. I think okay, it's a yeah. wonderful book. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Eat to Live, um, the China study, because it's based oh, yeah, on the blue book. zones. Have you yeah. read that one? No, but I heard that the book that book is also good. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. And I had the yeah. opportunity to interview Dr. T. Colin Campbell. He was on the oh, podcast nice. and fascinating man. He was doing veganism yes. long before it was the mm -hmm. thing to do. Um, and, you know, that which really leads into the next question about fads. You know, a lot of people say, oh, this is a fad. It's like, uh, it's really cool to say you're vegan. But what is the mindset of somebody who is really a vegan compared to somebody who's just kind of testing the waters, what would you say is the distinction? I would recommend not to eat too much fat, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so you can get also the fat from nuts, like healthy fat. And yeah, olive oil is, I think it's a good fat mm -hmm. to use for cooking, uh, frying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard coconut oil is not really good, right? Right, right. So should you use it not too much? 
Well, you know, it's interesting since going plant-based, I've given mm-hmm. up all uh, processed oils, olive oil, coconut oil. And I based that on what I read in Dr. Furman's book, Eat to Live. And mm-hmm. uh, he, he does the no SOS, which is no added salt, no added oil, no added sugar. And um, I know for me, a big one was getting rid of the processed sugar because I used to eat donuts a lot. And that's the challenge that some people have is that mm-hmm. they can eat vegan, but they're not eating healthy. Um, and I, I think with your raw food background and your your book, it shows people a healthier way to be a vegan. Yes. And I would also recommend a supplement like mm. multivitamin, mm-hmm. like from A to Z. Mm-hmm. You also need a B12. You need to pay attention. That right, right. B12. And uh, D3, like if there's no sunlight, you need Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, in closing, what are your final thoughts for people? Yeah, it would be nice if you try a vegan diet and then you can see it's very good for your health. Yes, absolutely. And we'll make sure to put all your contact information below. And Claudia, thank you so much. Uh, All the way from Germany. I'm in Oregon right now. That's the beauty of technology that we're using it in a positive way. And uh, thank you so much for all you're doing and wishing you continued success. Thank you so much. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices. The kind of choices that are kind to your body the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.